Hello, in previous video we have seen how to connect a heavy forwarder with the Splunk indexer cluster manually, right? So over there what we have done is from, I am talking about basically this particular video. So what we have done it over there is from each and every indexer, we went to settings and forwarding and receiving and then we configured receiving here. Correct. So we have added basically this port over here where it will be listening and then we have done it for each and every indexers here and then from the heavy forwarder. So what we have done is we went to the similar place settings forwarding and receiving and we have configured the forwarding over there. Right. So so this is the stuff we have done it over there. Now couple of things over here is like this full process is manual, right? So whenever, let's say we have a situation where we are adding a new indexer, right? So we need to follow this, the same steps again, right? We, from that new indexer, we again, you know, need to go to this receiving data, configure the receiving port, as well as from the heavy forwarder also, we have to add the new indexer over here. So now let us think about, is there any way we can automate this one. We can solve this manual task. We can basically remove this manual task over here and try to automate this stuff over here. Now, if I just talk about this settings, right? So let us try to see where this particular setting is getting saved over there. So for that, what I will do is I will go to the VM instances and I will log in to one of the indexers over here. Okay, the sim similar settings will be there for other indexer as well. Now for your information, so I am using the same setup, whatever you have seen in the previous video as well. And with the similar details and also if you are wondering about these things, this, this annotations over here. So in Google Chrome, you can basically group tabs, something like if you right click on a tab and add tab to a group, so you can create either new group or a, add the tab to an existing group as well. So this is very handy because over here, these are all the IP address I have to remember, right? So instead of that, I can just group them together into cluster master, indexer, heavy forwarder and search it so that I do not need to, I will not be confused and it will save a lot of time over there as well. Okay. So uh, this is a very good feature actually. So now if I just log into my indexer one now, let us try to see where this particular settings is getting saved. Now in our indexer one, so let us try to find that particular settings over there. It should be in the inputs.conf, but we need to know its location as well. So if you are not sure where it will get saved, so you can always use the Splunk B tool, right? So let us do that. If I just go to slash OPT slash Splunk and bin folder from there, we'll just run dot slash Splunk B tool. We are talking about inputs.conf file. So inputs list, then I'll say debug. And what we want is we want to find triple nine seven, right? So if I just do that one, let's see, sorry, not triple nine seven, grape triple nine seven here. Okay. There is a space over here. So if I just see it, it has created this particular settings under the launcher app, launcher app, local folder. Correct. So let's go over there. So if I just go to CD slash OPT Splunk ETC apps and launcher app, launcher app, and then go to local folder. So if I do LS, so there is an inputs.conf, correct? So, so this is the, this is where it gets saved. And if you go to other indexers as well, you will find the settings, a similar place over here. Now, now, can we just try to distribute this particular inputs.conf through our configuration bundle push, right? So in that way, what will happen if a new indexer is coming up, it will automatically get the update from the cluster master. So I do not need to configure for the new indexers over there. Okay. So let us go back to our problem statement. So uh, our problem has twofold problem, right? So one is 
whenever a new indexer is joining the cluster in that time i had to manually add this one so i can solve this using the configuration bundle push right now the second problem will be in my heavy forwarder i have to add that new indexer over here as well right now this one i cannot solve using the configuration bundle push now i can think of like the deployment server from where i can deploy an app which will basically push this changes to the heavy forwarder but again in the deployment server app also you need to add that new indexers there as well right indexer details over there as well right so at least we will not be able to solve the second part of the problem now but at least the first part of the problem where we need to create this inputs.conf at the indexer level we can solve it using the configuration bundle push so let us let us do that one today later we will see how to fix the second part as well okay so there is a method called indexer discovery so that we will try to learn as well so so for now let us try to solve the first part of this problem so what i'll do now i will remove this manual settings for now because we will be doing it automatically right so from the all the indexers i will just do the delete this particular settings whatever we have done it before so that there is no settings for now also in the heavy forwarder level i will go to settings data inputs so where is my data inputs data inputs now from there i will just for now i will just disable the tmdb input over here okay because we will be working on the changes and that is fine uh, once our changes are ready we will come back to heavy forwarder and do some more changes as well but for now let us go back to our master so we have everything set up if you see everything is done even indexers also you can see our tmdb index now we will log in to our cluster master from the back end so i'll just go over there now now what we'll do is i will just go to slash opt splunk etc master apps right because we want to distribute through configuration bundle push if i do an ls so previously in the previous video we have seen like how to use this guy over here for the single file right so now this video let us try to see how we can distribute this inputs.conf settings using a application over here using an app over here so as i have told before if you are creating a new app so that app should be inside this master apps folder correct so let us try to create an app an app means a simple directory in splunk right so if i just say make directory peer config app let's say give let's give this particular name of this app now i will go to peer config app and we are trying to just push an inputs.conf right so we can do it using our default folder itself right so let's create a default folder over here default folder because it is our app right so whatever changes we will be doing we will be keeping in the default folder itself now we will go to default folder and we will create a inputs.conf file here inputs inputs dot conf file here and what will be the content of this file it will be the same configuration we have seen before at, at the inputs.conf in the indexer right in the launcher app default for sorry in the launcher app local folder over there right so we will put the same configuration over here as well so that all the indexer all the peers will be getting that particular settings there so i already saved that configuration in my notepad so i'll just copy it over here so i'll go to insert mode and i will paste it here so this will become my inputs.conf content over here so now we have we have our app that is ready now if i just go back here let me try to show you that one as well so if you see this is this is actually owned by root right so you can change it to splunk user using the ch mode ch mode r splunk colon 
Splunk and then this particular folder over here, right? So sorry, it will be ch own this one over here not ch mode ch mode you use to change the file permission anyway now uh, once our app is ready now what i'll be doing is i'll be doing this bundle push over there right so let us go back to our indexer cluster master ui and from there do the configuration bundle push so from our cluster master we'll go to edit and configuration bundle actions the same stuff you can do it from the CLI as well whatever you prefer and first I will do the validate and check restart so with this will basically validate whether is there any error in my bundle or not configuration bundle or not right or and also it will check for restart and if you see this time it is telling me restart is required that means it will be basically after pushing the bundle it will basically restart all these three pairs over here so it may take a little bit of time over here so let us push our changes so if you see it here once it it completes the validation reloading part it basically now restarting pairs one by one and you can see the status from here as well which pair is currently getting restarted and what is the status of it after the restart you can see from indexer one it tried and now it is restarting the indexer three here and now it is indexer two so one by one it will basically restart all the indexers here so once restart is completed it will it should show successful okay because we already validated it so it, we should not be getting any error after this stage now now we have pushed our changes that means each and every indexer should have got this peer app peer config app whichever just just now we have created so let us check it out from one of the indexers so i'll just log into my indexer one over here and try to check it so from the indexer one i will just go to slash opt splunk etc slave apps folder right and if i just do an ls here if you see it has received the peer config app the peer config app over here right and if i just go to inside this peer config app and do a ls over here so we have our default folder correct and we have our inputs.conf as well we have our inputs.conf over here as well so if I just see the inputs.conf over here, so this is the same settings we have seen before. So our that part is ready. Our all the peers are getting automatically update for this particular settings, correct? And even whenever a new peer will be joining, that should get this particular settings as well automatically. So now let us test it out whether this change works or not. So for that, what I will do is anyway we have our tmdb apps in our heavy forwarder and also we have not automated that heavy forwarder changes right so if i go back to heavy forwarder see if i just go back to my heavy forwarder and settings data inputs not the data input settings forwarding and receiving in configure forwarding so we have we still have these things we need to add manually over here because we have not automated this part so now let us log into heavy forwarder backend and if you know for tmdb we have implemented the checkpoint right so previously we have already ingested some movies so that would have gone into the checkpoint file over there so i'll just remove it so that i can just test it out after this changes new movies are coming up or not so for that what i will be doing is i will be logging into my heavy forwarder from the back end now this is this change is only required for because of the tmdb app the way uh, i have implemented it for your own app maybe this step is not needed at all so i'll go to slash opt splunk etc apps folder okay and i'll go to tmdb app i'll go to bin folder that is where i have my checkpoint i think there is a directory called checkpoint 
and if I do a ls here, so there is a checkpoint dot txt. So let us open that and let us remove all the movies from here. So I'll do one comma dollar d here. Okay, so escape this one. So we have removed all the movies from the checkpoint directory. Now let us try to enable the input we have for our TMDB app and try to see whether the movies are getting ingested or not. So if I just go back to my search head and for last 15 minutes try to find any movies, these there are not, there is no movies. But now after I enable this particular script, we should be seeing the movies if all of our configurations are working correctly. So I'll just go to data inputs and from there I'll just go to scripts and I will just enable this guy over here. Now once if everything is fine I should be able to see some movies for last 15 minutes and if you see it over here it is able to ingest the data over here as well okay so now question is let let me go back to our indexer one of the indexer over here so indexer one now our input dot con file is inside a slave apps folder inside this particular slave slave apps folder and there is a subfolder over here which is our pr config app correct so now in a cluster environment now this thing works because in a cluster environment the slave apps have the highest precedency over there okay even though you have something on system local the slave apps still get precedence from the system local as well okay so this thing you remember and that is the reason these things works over here so so we have just seen how to push some changes using an app through the configuration bundle push over there right and the use case we achieved it here over here is trying to automate the peer level configuration at least when we are trying to do the heavy forwarder configuration now there are lot of things i need to talk about regarding the apps in the configuration bundle push probably i'll park it for some other video so that i can at least get a very used good use case and then try to implement it now the next thing we will be trying to do is like how to automate the other part of this problem where from the heavy forwarder also we do not need to add the new indexers okay so hopefully this video was helpful see you in the next video